What's up guys and welcome to the first box opening on our channel of Masters 25. I've already gone ahead and pulled the wrapper off of this box here, but uh, before we get into this, I did want to mention a special thank you to Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles. They're in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Uh, so if you're in the Charlotte, North Carolina area or somewhere around that, you can definitely come check them out. They are doing a lot of fantastic stuff. Uh, the store's under new management, <clears throat> excuse me, and the new uh, owner is a super, super nice guy. Very, very cool. Uh, the store manager, Josh, is also fantastic. I would highly suggest checking them out. Uh, you can do so via their Facebook group. There's a, just a, a link in the description down below. Uh, so definitely go check them out. I would give them a follow as well. Uh, they're doing a lot of stuff right now with Pokemon. They're looking to do a lot more with uh, Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, they also do, of course, sell comics, sports cards, all of that stuff. So if you're interested in any of it, definitely check them out. Definitely join the Facebook group. A lot of fun, a lot of great guys. So definitely check that out. Um, with that, though... I do want to mention there are a few things that I wanted to talk about with Masters 25. So if you've been paying attention uh, as we open these, if you've been paying attention over the last, uh, I would say, two, three days, uh, there have been some interesting headlines with Masters 25. Um, we'll kind of briefly go through comments, by the way. Uh, so a few really interesting things. Uh, Rudy from Alpha Investments has... Uh, he. Uh, initially put together a video with two boxes that were very similar he then uh, I guess just today even uh, put up another video where a lot of the same foils were pulled um, I don't know if there's anything too crazy going on there or any major correlation our first rare by the way is Niv Mizzet um, I don't know if there's anything too crazy going on there, but it's been talked about that there could be some mapping issues. Uh, having, you know, sat on it for a couple days, I think people are kind of jumping away from that conclusion. I don't think that that's actually the case, but um, it was interesting nonetheless. And another interesting point was brought up by Desolator Magic. Uh, so if you do follow him, you may have also heard that he's thinking, oh my goodness. All right, guys, uh, second pack. We have a Jace the Mind Sculptor, so we pulled the best card that we could have possibly pulled uh, right off the bat. Wow, that is great. Um, so <clears throat> he Desolator Magic basically has a history with uh, card printing and stuff like that, so he knows a decent amount about how that actually works. And uh, basically what he was saying is he thinks uh, pretty certainly, in fact, that... Ooh, Street Wraith. Uh... Pact of Negation, and a, oh my gosh, a foil Rashadden port. Guys, this box is insane just from the start. Holy crap. Um, <laughs> I'm amazed by this. Thank you, Grand Slam. Um, so anyway, he basically thinks what they did was, uh, if you've noticed in the past what we found with uh, Masters boxes is they're very hit or miss. So sometimes you have a blowout box where you just get tons of value and it works out really, really well. A Blood Moon, not bad. Um, and so you make your money back and probably then some pretty easily. But uh, there's also been complete dud boxes where you just don't pull anything of really any significant value at least. And so you end up wasting a bunch of money on a box that you really hope to get a lot more out of. Uh, and his opinion on it, and I don't know if it's confirmed or anything like that, uh, Blue Sun Zenith, is that uh, to kind of combat that a little bit and get less variance as far as value is concerned, not necessarily in terms of what cards you get, is uh, there, it was something to do with the distance that the cards were taken to be randomized and things like that. I honestly couldn't tell you the details because I know next to nothing about that. A living death. Um, uh, but basically he was saying that they cut down on that variance. And so hopefully when you open a box of Masters 25, you'll at least make decent value. You might not make every single dollar back that you paid for the box. Uh, but the idea is that you'll make the majority of it back. And that keeps you from having the complete dud boxes. On the other hand, that also can keep you from having the complete crazy boxes. We have a Biden. Um... Which means, you know, you're going to sort of hit that middle ground a lot more often. Now, I think that's fine by me. I think that's great, actually, because 
I do really despise when you buy a, a a box that supposedly has a ton of value in it, but you just really don't get any of it. <laughs> um, unfortunately, that happens a lot. Ooh, Cascade Bluffs. Great. Um, unfortunately, that's happened a lot in the past. And even with Masters 25, there's still... I've, I've seen a few box openings, and in fact, my first box of Masters 25, I really didn't get too much value, but... I did get a few of, you know, I got a Blood Moon, I got a, <clears throat> a couple of the Filter Lands, excuse me. So I still got enough value to feel like, okay, it wasn't a complete waste. Um, a Rat Catcher. Foil Arcane Denial, by the way. Beautiful. Um, so, I, I, it seems to hold kind of true. I, again, I don't know if that's confirmed, so please don't, you know, take that to heart. But it seems like that's definitely the way it went. Um... And I think that's probably for the better. Ooh, there we go. A Vendillion Click. Beautiful. This box has been insane. And a Foil Disenchant. That's great, too. Um, so I, I like that mentality. I think if that did happen and that's the way things go, um, I would hope that Wizards would actually continue with that, especially in these special sets. Uh, standard, obviously. Ooh, Simeon Spear Guide. That's not the case. Darren. Cool card. Um, but yeah, so I think that's really interesting. I do not think mapping is actually an issue. Um, I think that was just, you know, variance happens, things like that can happen. And even Desolator Magic, who, um, had a comment about that was saying, basically it, I mean, it could have been an early print run box or something along those lines. Wow. Pendlehaven, uh, probably not too expensive, but not bad. Um, it could have been an early trial box or something along those lines where it was just a fluke accident that it happened that way. I will say that it was fairly suspicious that literally, I mean, I think there were one or two cards that were not the same in the rare and mythic slot. It was kind of insane. Um, ooh, Elvish Piper. Great. And a foil cultivate. Um, so it was a little weird, but uh, it doesn't seem like that's been duplicated, at least not on any major scale, not like that. So... Uh, I would kind of write that off as just not something to worry about. Um, I will say this is the third box. <laughs> Triska oh, wow. So I saw this, thought it was terrible, and then there's a foil Eidolon, which is absolutely insane. Um, <laughs> so uh, the first box I opened was not fantastic. Um, I already mentioned, you know, there were a few Blood Moon, a couple of the Filter Lands, things like that. It was decent. Uh, the second box was much better. I did get a Rashadden port, uh, a couple other decent cards. I actually have them right over there. Uh, Nickel Bolas, by the way. I love this artwork, so I'm happy to see that. Um, but I did also still get stuff like Doomsday, uh, which I love Doomsday. It's a great card, but it's definitely not a high-value card by any means. So it was hit or miss, if that makes sense. Uh, I think I got a Master of the Wild Hunt, an Imperial Recruiter. I did pull an Imperial Recruiter in both boxes, but in the first box, that was very much the highlight of that box, um, which is a good highlight, don't get me wrong, but that was kind of it, unfortunately. Grenzo, I love Grenzo. Uh, happy to see that. Last stack here, by the way. Um, so yeah, it it's been a little bit hit or miss, but I will say if I'm looking at, you know, the cost of everything, honestly, um, the first box was definitely worse, but it wasn't actually terrible. I mean, it wasn't amazing, but it wasn't terrible. <laughs> Speaking of Doomsday, um, I mean, hey, with this box, I'm actually fine with it because there have been some really good pulls in this box. Uh, but the second box was actually pretty great, so... This box seems to be by far the best of all of them. I will say a lot of value is to be had in the foil slot as well, as it tends to be with these master sets. Uh, Hell's Caretaker is our rare, by the way. Uh, there are a lot of decent value foil commons and uncommons. Um, things like Lightning Bolt and Curse Catcher uh, in the uncommon slot, they're fantastic. Foil Brainstorm and Counterspell, uh, Dark Ritual, there's... There's really a lot of good value in this. So Notion Thief is our rare. Um, so even in that foil slot, even if you don't make it on the mythic rares, if you pull a tree, for instance, which I did, by the way, in the first box, um, you can still pull out some really good value with this, even just in the foil slots. So things to think about when you're opening. Ooh, the center of the sea. Great card. Happy to see that. Um, so I... 
I don't know, people are really kind of downing the Masters 25 set, and I don't necessarily agree with every single card they put in this. Um, in fact, the majority of them I definitely do not, but it's not as bad as people seem to be making it out to be, at least in my opinion, uh, Chroma's Vengeance. It's not amazing, uh, but it's no Iconic Masters 2.0. A lot of people are on that camp of, it's terrible, it's you know the worst thing in the world, and it's just kind of not. I mean, it's fine. It's not amazing, but that's okay. Um, it's definitely not worth paying MSRP for or anything like that, but uh, Flooded Grove, great. But um, it's still not bad. Last two packs, by the way, guys. So I don't know. I'm, I'm actually fairly ex happy with this set. Um, there are definitely a lot of choices that I think could have been significantly better. Um, I, I don't know. It's, they had to pull cards from all sets and stuff like that. Uh, Pernicious Deed. Oh, there we go. A Foil Curse Catcher. Uh, fantastic. And so they had to pull cards even from sets that didn't really have very much, which is fine. Um, they pulled stuff from the new sets like Online Cat and Ixalan and all that stuff, uh, which a lot of people hated that Chupacabra was in, but uh, Is It Chemister is our last rare. But, I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? They had to pull from all 25 years. So let's see what we got here. So not too good. Pernicious Deed's great. Flooded Grove is fine. Uh, the center Doomsday is our mythic here. Grenzo is not great. Foil Eidolon, fantastic. Elvish Piper is not bad. Pendlehaven's not bad. Darren's pretty good. Vendillion Click is fantastic. Uh, Cascading Bluff, Cascade Bluff, excuse me. Biden's not amazing. Uh, Living Death, I do like quite a lot. Blood Moon's great. Pact of Negation's amazing, uh, along with Foil Rashadenport. Jace, the Mind Sculptor, and Niv Mizzet. So our mythics here, uh, two out of three were fantastic with a Jace and a Vendillion click. Doomsday, while it is a card I love, is definitely not amazing. Uh, our rare slot, ten, it actually went pretty well. So we got two foil rares, uh, which is worth noting. So Eidolon and Rashadenport, I actually don't know, but Rashadenport, I'm assuming, is worth quite a lot. Uh, so we'll need to sleeve that up pretty quickly. Um, but everything else, decent, I would say. I think this box definitely made its money back. Um, definitely, definitely happy with that, and definitely happy with Grand Slam. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring this. Really do appreciate it. Um, hopefully you guys will go check them out. Again, their Facebook group is linked in the description down below. So all you gotta do is click on it, follow, and hang out with them. They're great guys. Definitely go check that store out. So, with that being said, uh, thank you for watching this Masters 25 box opening. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, we'll make sure to open another box here soon. Uh, but until that next video, guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you later.